Hey guys, Sundown here. This is going to be my chapter review to My Hero Academia or Boku no Hero Academia 183 Culture Festival All Day Long. Now this was a decent chapter once again. And I really liked quite a few parts of this chapter. I thought they were necessary and we needed to have them uh, put into this chapter at, at the least before we continued. So the chapter starts with Class B performing their kind of mishmash of Romeo Juliet, uh, Romeo and Juliet, Harry Potter, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, that kind of mashup. And as you'd expect, it was pretty funny. And the reactions from the students leaving the leaving the performance is pretty funny too. They're just like, what the hell is that? And they, they were laughing, they were happy and all that. It was good stuff. So it turns out that Class 1A couldn't watch the performance because they were too busy, busy clearing up all the ice uh, from Todoroki's kind of ice spires from the last chapter uh, and all the mess they'd made during their performance in general. So all the while... All, all while this is happening, Deku's being scolded by All Might for not taking his phone with him while he went to the store, which obviously led to All Might uh, worrying about Deku's whereabouts, and they were worried about where Deku was uh, during the possible infiltration, which was gentle. And All Might's chastisement is kind of is very lenient. He's not he's not really going in. And uh, then we have Ectoplasm and Hound Dog appear, and obviously Hound Dog just goes straight in. He's kind of that aggressor type guy. And he, he just straight up shouts at Deku right up in his face, telling him that although he didn't suffer any major damage and although the culture festival continued and everything turned out okay, it was the wrong decision to make as a provisional hero who's still study, studying at UA. He's still a student. So he then softens up a bit, you know, realizing that he is just rinsing the hell out of Deku. Uh, and he says that Deku needs to rely more on the pro heroes around him. A nice heartwarming moment. Uh, and I, I, thought, I thought it was really... Nice to see. It was a, it was a wake up call for Deku uh, to make sure that um, even though he might make a difficult decision, uh, there will always be backlash, no matter if uh, if the decision was correct or not. I mean, like it's the same in uh, real life situations. Even if the decision you make in something is correct, uh, chances are there will still be backlash if it's a big decision to make, uh, no matter how correct the decision was. Uh, but it also shows that Hound Dog, even though very aggressive looking, uh, a very aggressive looking hero, he still cares for the students as much as any other teacher within UA. So after that, he launches Deku into the air and tells him to go enjoy the rest of the culture festival along with his uh, classmates. And he proceeds to <laughs> molest All Might for a reason I'm not quite sure of and he, he loses his ability to talk. So right after that, Deku meets up with Eddie, Midio, uh, Eddie and Midio, and I think Aiza was there, I'm not too sure, I think it's just Eddie and Midio at this point, with uh, Eddie explaining to him how much she enjoyed uh, the performance in specific parts and which parts she enjoyed, and I thought it was pretty cute how Midio and Eddie were in sync while she was motioning her thoughts and things like that, she's putting her arms up and his arms were up and everything like that, but the important part here was the relief you could see on Deku's face with him wiping away the tears after Eddie's telling him how much uh, she enjoyed the performance. This is kind of like a personal battle for both Mirio and Deku, but seeing Deku as the main character, how it affects him, and he's there trying to bring a smile to the face of a girl who's been abused for years, and he's 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 invested a lot in this performance and in, in his efforts to kind of please uh, Eddie or just to make her smile. So I thought this scene was one of the scenes that I mentioned earlier, which was very much needed at this point in time. So we then have my boy Mineta screeching at Deku to kind of like help them clear up all the mess they've made, especially because Deku was the guy that was late to the performance anyway. At this point in time, a bunch of third years make their way past Class 1A, thanking them for their aw 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 awesome performance. Uh, and Kirishima is over here, he's, he's, he's all optimism and happiness, he's thanking them in return. Uh, but Bakugo's just stood there at the ready, kind of waiting for something to go down, and Bakugo's kind of like always always ready for something bad to happen so he's just stood there staring waiting for something to happen and thankfully nothing did happen the the two petty third years uh, also pop up and say it was a great performance and then they swallow their pride further by actually apologizing to class 1a for their initial intentions of ridicu ridiculing uh, the performance and I loved I loved how De Bakugo saw this as kind of like a vict victory and he was just <laughs> demonically smiling and demonically pleased uh, by their by their apology and we then have kind of the sensibility of uh, the class president Ida who informs the class that although they may have affected the hearts of the people who were present at the performance there are still a bunch of third years who hadn't attended their performance and therefore they will not have uh, been uh, able to relieve their stress or anger or anything like that so 
they they still have to go out and I'm, I'm I think he was implying that they still need to go out and try try and do their job to try and ease the stress for these guys, but the third years kind of take that weight and promise to convey the thoughts and feelings that they'd received from Class One A uh, to the rest of their year group, which meant that Class One A could go and enjoy the culture festival as they were meant to. So once again, I loved how Bakugo was like. Uh, drag the people who didn't attend here and I, I don't feel refreshed it's almost like he's he's just ready always spoiling for a fight so I, was, I, I really like Bakugo and I think he this scene is again was just funny so Mineta then once again he's just he's just really frustrated all the way throughout the chapter and he screeches at his class he's like let's get everything cleared up quick time quick time we gotta get all this ice cleared up and it turns out once Kirishima asks him that um, Mineta just wanted to hurry to get the best seats at the beauty pageant <laughs> As you can imagine, uh, which they did actually go to afterwards. And we saw uh, Kendo in her dress showing us her martial arts skills. Her dress gets a bit torn up, but it's not like fairy tale where it gets torn up and you just like, oh my god, everything's out. It's, not, it's nothing like that. It's just a little bit torn up uh, along the knees. Uh, we saw Ken Lanzaki, I think was her name, who is actually a third year. Uh, we knew that, but I didn't know she was a support student. I might have just glossed over that. And she's, she's shown her engineering skills in this chapter. She's got this like half tank mecha with a replica of her face at the front really awesome looking and I was just like <laughs> she's going in and just, so uh, we then actually see uh, Nejire who is kind of she oozes this air of calm and composure and she takes to the skies and she's dancing uh, while whilst noting to herself kind of everyone who's in attendance who she knows like Suyu uh, Ochako um, she, she, she sees Togata and stuff like that and they're all impressed by how beautiful how amazing she looks at this point in time so with that the beauty pageant finishes and Mineta has his has his store of nighttime reading for like the next month sorted he's just like yeah I'm, I'm done this was a good this was a good adding so we then see a compilation of panels as class 1a kind of go to different events enjoy the culture festival with Bakugo going to the obstacle course Deku and companies so that's Eddie, Tiri, uh, Eddie Mirio, uh, Suyu, I think it was Ochako or Uraraka uh, they go to a crepe stand we see Mineta, Mina and company I think it was Kirishima or no, actually was it Kirishima or was it Kaminari one of the two uh, they go to the haunted house and everyone just kind of really living it up uh, so it turns out that Nejire actually won the beauty pageant too which was a really nice touch because you know it's her last year this, this is something that she's done maybe every year that she's been in ua so for her to finally win it was kind of like a, a nice way to go out so the culture festival kind of ends and deku sees off eddie at the gates uh, as any child would be uh, with a with an event like this she's saddened because the festival has ended but deku kind of gives a, a candied apple which uh, to brighten her mood which he actually made himself which i thought was pretty nice you know nice guy deku uh so as eddie hits us with kind of like another bout of cuteness overload we switch scenes to the police station so a direct contrast here kind of like that cuteness overload and then to the stark nature of the police station where love lover and gentle are being interrogated now this was something i was very interested in so i thought this scene was incredibly well done and was a necessary scene something we all needed to see to provide a little bit of closure uh for the gentle storyline so love lover's interrogation is the first uh interrogation we see with the police being surprised at her technical skill set considering she's self-taught and they ask her whether she's ever thought of you know providing uh her skill set to the rest of humanity you know being a benefit to the world and she she replies that she's she has only ever done anything since she's been partnered with partnered with gentle for gentle so she she's only ever considering anything she does to be for gentle's sake uh and at that point we go to gentle's interrogation where the gorilla cop tells him that the his lie about love lovers kind of connection and brainwashing to him uh, brainwashing by him is easy to disprove and it's obvious that love lover only ever just um helped him because she loved him uh and at the mention of their numerous crimes together gentle once again says that Iba, who is Je who is a uh, love lover uh, was never directly involved in the crime so her offenses can't be equal to his he's really kind of just pleading her case for her and at this point the gorilla cop realizes that gentle uh, loves love lover in return so he then the gorilla cop then goes through gentle's kind of backstory his history you know a former hero in training expelled became more and more twisted and started uploading his crimes for others to see and gentle explains that you know in his past he, he'd suddenly remembered his dream from seeing his classmate but you know he remembered his dream and suddenly he just he needed to get it done and he he wanted to get it done in, in, in any in any way possible and because he was consumed by so much fear you know the unemployment having having nothing to provide for himself 
uh, having no money to provide for himself or anything like that. Due to that fear, he just ki it kind of took him down a dark road. Uh, not as dark as a lot of people in this manga, but um, it took him down a, a road, but basically it was the wrong path to achieve his said, his said dream before. Now, the key thing here is that Gentle recognizes that he was in the wrong in how he pursued his dream because this is what allows the cop to show mercy uh, just a couple panels later. So instead of giving him the you go on a prison, son, speech, the chop, the, the chop, the cop chooses to tell Gentle that as long as he has the will to rebuild his life, which is what Gentle has, you know, he's, he's motivated to change his life, to change his situation, and he's not going to cut corners or anything like that. He'll do what he needs to take, what, what it needs to take to change his life and to rebuild. So as long as he has that will to rebuild his life, he can be set on the path to redemption. And that's exactly what it looks like is happening. So I'm really happy for that because Gentle, you can see Gentle's reaction. He, just, he gets really emotional. He's shaking because this could possibly be the best chance he's ever had to prove himself in his entire life. And with such mastery over his quirk at this point in his life, uh, he should be able to get pretty far. So I, I was really happy for Gentle. I really like that he's going, he's being given the chance to redeem himself because he hasn't done anything particularly malicious in his crimes. So he's being given the opportunity. He's like, you want to rebuild your life? I'm going to give you the opportunity. Take it. So it was a really nice, feel-good chapter to end the Culture Festival on. I really enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys thought of this review. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys in a bit.